Hello everyone. In this video, we will learn to use constant pressure calorimetry to calculate the enthalpy change of a given reaction and to calculate the specific heat of an unknown substance. First, let us learn how to determine the enthalpy change delta H of a chemical reaction. Let us say we want to determine the enthalpy change of the following neutralization reaction. Aqueous hydrochloric acid reacts with aqueous sodium hydroxide to form aqueous sodium chloride and water. We learned in the earlier videos for a reaction or process that occurs at constant pressure and in which only work that is allowed is the pressure volume work, the enthalpy change of a reaction is equal to the heat energy absorbed or released that is delta H is equal to QP. So to find delta H of a reaction we need to perform the reaction at constant pressure and measure the heat absorbed or released during the reaction which is QP. The device that we use to determine the enthalpy change is called as constant pressure calorimeter and the overall process is called as calorimetry. A sophisticated calorimeter could be very expensive and it will be able to make very precise measurements of enthalpy change of a particular reaction. However, a simple calorimeter can be constructed either in the lab or even at home to calculate the approximate enthalpy change of a reaction. This simple calorimeter is often referred to as coffee cup calorimeter because it uses styrofoam coffee cups. The material required to construct the coffee cup calorimeter are the following. Two styrofoam cups place one cup inside another for insulation purposes. Next, a magnetic stir bar added inside the styrofoam cup, a styrofoam cover with a small hole and a thermometer placed through the hole into the styrofoam cup such that it just touches the reaction mixture. The reaction occurs inside the styrofoam cup and the two styrofoam cups and the cover are used to insulate the solution in which the reaction occurs. Now why we need to insulate the solution? We will learn a little bit later in this video. Let us assume we want to determine the delta H of the following neutralization reaction. This is an example of an exothermic reaction that is heat is released from the system to the surroundings. In fact, when you add a concentrated solution of hydrochloric acid to a concentrated solution of sodium hydroxide, the heat released is so much that it can lead to an explosion which in turn can break all the glassware in which the reaction occurs. However, if we do this reaction in a diluted condition, we can control the amount of heat produced in the reaction. For example, in this case, we add 100 milliliters of 1.0 molar HCl at 22 degrees Celsius to 100 milliliters of 1.0 molar sodium hydroxide also at 22 degrees Celsius into the calorimeter. The magnetic stir bar mixes the reactants together continuously. The hydrochloric acid reacts with sodium hydroxide that is added and releases the heat. The heat from the system which is reactants and products is transferred into the immediate surroundings that is the solvent of the reaction which is water. Therefore the temperature of the water increases and the increase in temperature 
can be monitored by the thermometer. Let us say after the reaction is complete, the final temperature of water is observed to be 28.6 degrees Celsius. Since the calorimeter is isolated, that is, there is no heat coming in or going out of the calorimeter, we can say that the heat that is released by the reaction must be completely absorbed by the solution. That is, heat released by the reaction is equal to heat absorbed by the solution. Since this reaction is occurring at constant pressure, heat released at constant pressure is equal to enthalpy change. Therefore, if we can calculate the amount of heat absorbed by the solution, we find the enthalpy change of the reaction. We learned in the earlier video that the heat absorbed by water can be calculated using the formula Q is equal to M C delta T where Q is heat absorbed or released M is the mass of the solution C is the specific heat of the solution and delta T is the change in temperature of the solution let us see if we have all the variables necessary to calculate heat released that is Q first do we have mass of the solution we have 100 plus 100 that is equal to 200 milliliters of solution inside the styrofoam cup we can calculate its mass by multiplying the volume of the solution with the density of the solution since the solution is so dilute we can assume that the density of the solution is same as the density of pure water and the density of pure water is 1 gram per milliliter. So the mass of solution is equal to the volume which is 200 milliliter times the density which is 1 gram per milliliter. Milliliter milliliter gets cancelled and mass is 200 grams. Next the specific heat capacity. Since the solution again is so dilute, we can assume that the specific heat capacity of the solution is the same as the specific heat capacity of pure water. And we can look up the specific heat capacity of pure water from the tabulated values, which is 4.18 joule per degree Celsius per gram. Next. Do we have the change in temperature? Delta T is equal to T final minus T initial. The initial temperature of water is 22 degrees Celsius and the final temperature is 28.6 degrees Celsius. So the difference is 6.6 degrees Celsius. Let us now plug in the values of mass specific heat and delta T into the Q is equal to MC delta T equation. If we do the math, we get 5.52 kilojoules of heat. Now this is the heat absorbed by the water or solution. We can also say that this is the amount of heat released when 100 ml of 1 molar hydrochloric acid is completely reacted with 100 ml of 1 molar sodium hydroxide at constant pressure. By definition, this is the enthalpy change of a reaction. So, the enthalpy change for this reaction is minus 5.52 kilojoules. The negative sign represents that the heat energy is released in the reaction. That is, it is an exothermic reaction. However, the enthalpy change of a reaction is often expressed in terms of moles of reacting substances. In the above reaction, we started with 
100 ml of 1.0 molar hydrochloric acid. The number of moles of hydrochloric acid therefore is 0.1 moles. So the enthalpy change when 0.1 moles of hydrochloric acid is consumed is minus 5.52 kilojoules. If one mole of HCl is consumed, then the enthalpy change would be 10 times as much. That is minus 55.2 kilojoules per mole of hydrochloric acid. Next, we can also determine the specific heat capacity of a substance using the constant pressure calorimetry. Let us assume we have a block of metal whose specific heat has to be determined. We first measure the mass of this metal block and heat the metal block to some known temperature. We then add the heated metal block to a known mass of water at known temperature inside a calorimeter. We know that the heat flows from hotter objects to colder objects. So with time the temperature of metal block decreases and the temperature of water increases. After certain time they reach an equilibrium state in which both of them have same temperature and that temperature can be measured using the thermometer. Since the calorimeter is isolated, no heat flows out or into the calorimeter. Therefore, we can say that the heat lost by the metal block as it cools down is exactly equal to the heat gained by water. Mathematically, minus Q metal is equal to Q water. The negative sign shows that the heat is lost by the metal. For the metal, heat lost is equal to mass of the metal times specific heat of the metal times the delta T of the metal. That is equal to mass of water times specific heat of water times delta T of water. We know the mass of metal which we have measured at the beginning of the experiment. We know the initial temperature and final temperature of metal. Therefore, we can calculate the delta T of metal. We know the mass of water. We know the specific heat of water from the tabulated value. And we also know the initial and final temperature of water. Therefore, delta T of water. We can plug in all these values and calculate the specific heat of unknown metal. Let us do an example problem. An unknown metal block weighing 15.0 grams is heated to 100 degrees Celsius and then added to 50 grams of water in a coffee cup calorimeter. The water temperature changes from 25 degrees Celsius to 29.32 degrees Celsius. Find the specific heat of the metal. We are going to use the same formula. In a coffee cup calorimeter, heat lost by the metal is equal to heat gained by water. That is, minus Q metal is equal to Q of water. For metal, heat lost is equal to minus mass of metal times specific heat of metal times change in temperature for the metal. And for water, it is same as mass of water times specific heat of water times delta T of water. Let us plug in the values. The mass of metal block is given as 15 grams. Specific heat of metal, we need to calculate that out. Let us now look at delta T of metal. The initial temperature of metal is 100 degrees Celsius. The final temperature of the metal block is not given. However, the final temperature of water is given. 
which is 29.32 degrees Celsius. Remember, the water temperature stops rising only when its temperature is equal to that of the metal block. Therefore, we can say that the final temperature of the metal block is same as the final temperature of water. So, the final temperature of metal block is 29.32 degrees Celsius minus the initial temperature is 100 degrees Celsius. Let's now look at the water. Mass of water is 50 grams. Specific heat is 4.18 joule per gram per degree Celsius. Final temperature is 29.32 and initial temperature is 25 degrees Celsius. If we do the math, we get specific heat of metal is equal to 0 0.85 joule per gram per degree Celsius. So, in this video, we learn two things. One, use calorimetry to calculate the enthalpy change of an aqueous reaction. And two, use calorimetry to calculate the specific heat capacity of an unknown metal.